Hi, my name is Susan Reed, and we're here at King Arthur Flowers Baking Education Center. And today we're going to make a cinnamon swirl loaf of bread. And we're also going to turn it into a raisin version. So we're going to make one dough and show you how to make it either into a cinnamon swirl loaf or a raisin cinnamon swirl loaf. So the first thing we're going to do is start with some water. We're going to measure out one cup plus two tablespoons, which is nine ounces of water. How much water a bread recipe needs can depend on how wet or dry the weather is. If it's really humid out, you want to use the lower end of water that's given in the recipe range. If it is dry, like in the middle of the winter, your doughs will need a little bit more water because the flour is like a sponge. It will either take water from the air or release water to the air. So I have nine ounces of water right here. And next comes the yeast. I happen to be using instant yeast here, which can get mixed in without taking an extra step to proof it. If this was active dry yeast, you would do exactly what I'm doing now and put the yeast in the water and give it a few minutes to dissolve and see if some bubbles happen. So you can use either one in the recipe. It will work either way. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of sweetener, both for the dough and the yeast. I'm going to use some honey, but you can use whatever you like. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of honey into this. This loaf of bread calls for three and a half cups of flour. And to make sure that you are not putting too much flour in the recipe, at King Arthur we recommend that you measure it this way. You want to stir the flour up in your bucket, sprinkle it into a dry measuring cup with a flat surface, and level off the top. Now I'm going to add the salt, which not only gives the bread some flavor, but it also helps to control the action of the yeast. And dry milk powder goes next. And we're going to add two tablespoons of butter. The butter helps the texture of the bread dough. And it also adds a nice flavor. It helps to inhibit staling. Those are all things that happen in your dough. I'm going to bring the dough together using our magic dough whisk, which is particularly good for getting yeast doughs started. Now. I'm pretty confident of this recipe because I've made it a lot recently, but if you've never made bread dough before, I strongly recommend that you keep a half a cup of the flour of the recipe out on your bench because you don't know if the dough is going to need all of it. See, this looks a little bit dry, so I have two options here. If I had left this flour out on my bench, it probably wouldn't be dry. I can give it another tablespoon of water at this point, which I think I'm going to do. There we go. And that should help bring the dough together more easily. Now I'm going to use a handy tool called a, a bowl scraper to help the dough come together. Kneading the dough helps the yeast get distributed evenly throughout the dough. And it helps to develop the gluten, which is the protein in the flour, which gives the bread its structure. So right now, this is kind of what we would call a shaggy mass. And what I'm going to do is just take the dough, fold it over on itself, and give it a quarter turn. Now, the objective here is not to add too much flour. So I don't want to put a lot of flour on the dough. I want to put the flour on my hands. And as you can see, right now, this dough is kind of lumpy and not very smooth. As I work with this, the personality of the dough is going to change quite a bit. So I'm just going to fold it over towards myself, gently push it away, and then give the dough a quarter turn. Now when you do this, we often have people, when we're teaching them to knead, who, um, who use bread dough for therapy. And they have some issues. And very frequently, they will push very hard on the dough. And when you do that, it will open up the dough so that all the wet parts on the inside are exposed. And then the dough gets sticky. And then in order to be able to work with it, you keep adding more flour. So if you happen to be someone, and you know who you are, that we would describe as an aggressive kneader, be nice to your dough. It's alive. 
And if you're nice to it, it in turn will reward you with a higher quality product. Okay, we've been kneading this dough long enough now that it's nice and nice and smooth. It's a little bit bouncy. And how do you know when the dough is done? Usually if you give it a little poke and it bounces back at you, that tells you that the gluten is developed enough that it's ready for its first rise. So what we're gonna do is just take the same bowl that we mixed this in and we'll scrape out any crusty bits. Didn't quite make the cut of the final dough. And we're gonna grease the bowl. And the dough is gonna go into the bowl. And just turn it over. And now we're gonna cover it with a handy dandy little shower cap. And this dough needs to rise for about an hour to an hour and a half. It's going to double um, and get kind of big and puffy looking. So what we're going to do here is take this dough and we're going to turn it into a raisin cinnamon swirl bread. So the first thing I need to do is add some raisins to it. So I have a cup of raisins right here. I'm just going to stretch this dough out a little bit and fold the raisins into it. If you don't want to do this step, you can just skip it and make a classic bread that has just a cinnamon swirl in it. But um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a complete raisin hound. I love raisins. So I never miss an opportunity to put raisins in my bread. Okay, so now we've taken the dough and enclosed the raisins in it. Now what I'm going to do is pat this out into a long rectangle, it's relatively thin. But I want to do it gently. I don't want to force the dough to go into a direction it doesn't really want to go in. So. And I want to keep it even because we're going to end up rolling this up to make a loaf of bread. Ideally, what you want to do is literally give the dough a rest. So I'm going to let that sit and I'm going to mix up the cinnamon swirl part of the bread. I have a quarter cup of sugar right here. I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and two teaspoons of flour, which is something you don't normally see in a bread filling. But if you've ever tried this before, you know that one of the hard things about any kind of swirl bread is that the pieces want to separate from each other and wants to make a big gap. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a technique here that will keep the layers in the bread from separating so much. Pat this out a little bit more. Now I'm going to brush this dough with some beaten egg. Now you can take an egg and beat it with a tablespoon of water if you like, or one of the things that I've been doing quite a bit is to use some egg substitute, which is kind of nice because you can only, you can pour out just as much as you need, so you're not wasting a bunch of egg. And they, you can just keep it in a carton in the refrigerator. So instead of beating up eggs for this, I'm just going to take some of these, this egg substitute, and I'm going to brush it on the dough. And between the egg and the flour that's in this filling, it will keep the layers from separating. I'm just going to sprinkle this. Nice, even layer. Make sure you don't have any bare spots. So what I want to do with this is pinch this together a little bit, especially on the ends, so I can keep all the filling inside it. And we're going to put the seam for the bread on the bottom. Now I have a nine, in, nine by five inch loaf pan. I'm going to grease it. Put a little extra insurance in the pan. 
just have a piece of parchment paper. This will help me get the loaf of bread out of the pan once the bread is baked. So I'm just going to lay this right inside the pan. Now I'm going to cover this and it's going to need a good hour to rise. While this dough is rising, you're going to want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And once the dough comes up to just above the edge of the pan, put it in the oven and set your time for, timer for 20 minutes. Now this dough is a little bit of a sweet dough, so it's going to brown on the top sooner than the inside is done. So after 20 minutes, you're going to want to put a little piece of foil on the top to keep it from burning. And then set the timer for another 10 to 15 minutes. Here we are with our finished loaves of cinnamon swirl bread. This one was made by hand, and this one was mixed in a bread machine. It wasn't baked in a bread machine, but it was mixed in a bread machine. They're both delicious breads, and they make a wonderful toast for breakfast. So let's see what the insides look like. This is always the big dramatic moment to see if your swirl is working. So there it is, our friendly spiral. And as you can see, the bread is holding itself together. It's not delaminating the way that it often does. So there's no big air gap in between all the layers. Now let's take a look at how our raisin bread turned out. Beautifully full of raisins. And there you have it. Cinnamon raisin swirl and cinnamon swirl bread.